Well, good afternoon everyone and welcome back to another video here with me Stevie on Stevie Rides. Today I'm going to trundle on down to the bike school and we're going to set up for the Mod 1 test. We're going to look at all the riding exercises that you'll need to complete during your Mod 1 test. And I'll give you some uh, advice on how to make the test a little bit easier for yourself. So, uh, without any more hesitation, let's get into it. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, welcome to my video on Mod 1 test. Uh, this is the first test to obtaining your full bike license, obviously after you've passed your theory test. When you arrive at the test centre, it will be laid out a little bit like this. Test centres are a lot bigger than my training ground, but uh, the spacing that I've got on the cones here is exactly the same. So the Mod 1 test is all done in a controlled space, and we're going to go through each of those exercises now. Okay, so let's have a look at the riding exercises involved in the Mod 1 test then. When you arrive at the test centre, you will ride through the car park, once you've done your paperwork with the examiner, ride through the car park and bring your bike onto the training ground. It's important to note that as soon as you're on that motorcycle, you are on test. So you can um, have a failure for the test by dropping the bike in the car park, for example. So silly little things can result in failures. Um, obviously, nerves can get the better of people as well, so just try and, try and keep it calm. The examiner will bring you onto the testing site and it will be laid out like this. And the first boxes that we're going to, or the first set of cones that we're going to be concerned about is uh, the green ones here. First exercise then is just parking your bike up within a coned area. That's all you've got to do. You ride out and then park within the confines of the uh, parking bay. Slow control for this exercise, slip the clutch, ride in nice and carefully. For all the slow manoeuvring exercises, I recommend just using your rear brake only. Uh, the front brake can be a little bit too harsh for slow riding. So let's get into it and ride on into that bay. Shoulder checks before you move. Remember, we're on a test now. So before we set away, check, check every time. So check, check, away we go. I'm going to use the space that's available to me. There's no restriction on it. I am the only person on the test site. Just be sure not to clip any of the cones. Clipping a cone, touching a cone is an immediate failure. But class, it is a collision. So I've ridden into the bay. I've slowed the bike down. I'm now just checking to make sure the bike's fully in the bay. And then I'm going to secure my machine. First of all, I'm going to select neutral. Then I'm going to turn the engine off. Pop it down onto the side stand. Make sure that's fully deployed. And rest the bike onto the side stand. Perfect, just like that. From here, it's a manual handling exercise. I'm going to be required to move this bike from this bay into that bay. The bike needs to be facing outwards so I'm ready to ride away. Now, there's a couple of methods for doing this. You can go backwards in one motion if you like and just back it straight on into the bay, or you can come out backwards, go forwards, and then back it in again. Observations are key. Again, you've got to look around yourself before moving. And it's down to personal preference how you do this. Now, personally, I don't spend a lot of time walking backwards, so I like to push my bike forwards. So first thing I'm going to do, take control of my machine, get rid of my side stand. I'm just going to check around myself to make sure it's clear and then ease the bike backwards out of the bay. Again, can't touch the cones, can't step over the cones, can't move my body around, etc. Take full control of the machine, push the bike forwards. Again, just checking around myself as I line up the back end of the bike. Final look to the rear. I'm going to back the bike into the bay. Again, trying to get it as central as possible. Once I'm satisfied it's all the way in, deploy the side stand, press the bike. That's exercise one. Okay, once we've completed the manual handling exercise, we're then going to look at the first of the riding exercises, and that's a slow controlled ride, slalom, followed by the figure of eight. So you can see the yellow cones that are in front of me now, and two blue cones at the end. I am going to slalom in and out of the yellow cones, and when I get to the blue cones at the top, I'm going to start my figure of eight. I will continue to do that figure of eight 
until the examiner tells me to stop. I expect to be doing two, three, maybe four rotations of the full eight. And then the examiner will wave me off and ask me to go and stop somewhere else. Okay, so let's take a look at how we go about doing this slalom and figure of eight. In its first gear, it's slow control work, observations before I set off. I'm going to make sure I don't clip any of the cones. I'm going to ride my bike between the first two, that's the first slalom done, and then just weave it in and out. Nice and steady, slow control riding to keep an eye on your exhaust and the back end of the bike so you don't end up clipping any of the cones. As I said, clip a cone and that's uh, grounds for immediate failure. Straight then into that figure of eight, look at, looping it round the top, and we're doing figures of eight around the blue cones. Just like on your CBT, slow control riding, turn your head, look where you want the bike to be, keep an eye on the cones and your reference points. The examiner's looking for control, smooth, consistent control. Again, if you drop your foot at any point during the slalom or figure of eight, it's grounds for immediate failure. So we want to avoid doing those sorts of things. This is where a bit of practice and a bit of discipline really comes into play. So I think that's three figures of eight done now. So the examiner will wave me off around about this point and ask me to come to a steady stop somewhere. So once we've completed our figures of eight, the next exercise is riding in a straight line under control. Again, slow speed control. If you look ahead, there's a, a set of four cones in a box shape and I've got to stop with my front wheel in that uh, area, in, in the middle of those cones, okay? So again, before I set away, observations, and then away we go. Set off nice and positively and then get on that rear brake, keep it down to a walking pace. Ease myself into the bay, dip the clutch, rear brake on, and stop. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to show you this on the camera, but my foot is right next to that cone down there. I'm gonna try and get it on camera if I can. You want to be very careful not to kick that cone, okay? Again, touching the cone, grounds for immediate failure. But with my foot next to that cone, my front wheel is nice and dead centered in the middle of the box here. The next exercise for me then is the riding U-turn, okay? Now this is a test, mod one test, so we've got to treat it as if we're on the road. There will be two white lines marked on the floor. You're not allowed to ride over those white lines. You've got to do the U-turn within the two white lines. Before we move though, observations. We want to make sure that we're aware of what's going on around us. And before we commit to the turn, we're going to put a lifesaver check in this time as well, okay? So, check left check behind make sure it's clear don't rush the rear check take your time roads clear up ahead and we set away slow control riding before we turn we put a lifesaver in and then we turn the bike within the width of the road draw parallel with where we set off from and come to a gentle stop again all rear brake work all slow control stuff Once you've completed the U-turn then, we're going to start looking at the brake exercises. There's three in total, if you include the slalom or the hazard avoidance exercise as, uh, as one of them. The first one then is a controlled stop. There's no speed requirement for the controlled stop, but this is now our opportunity to practice because for the next two, the emergency stop and the collision avoidance exercise, we have to be traveling at 50 kilometers an hour. Okay, so controlled stop, I'm gonna come through the area to my left here, which marks the, the brake testing area. Where the yellow hatted cones are, the ones with the little yellow ones on top, that is where the speed would get measured on the testing site. So right through there, speed will get measured, and then I can start stopping. Start stopping, that sounds funny, doesn't it? So, through there, and then all I'm gonna do is gas off, front brake, back brake, ease the bike down into the bay, and pop it into first gear as I'm about to stop, so I'm ready to set away. So let's put all that together then. I set myself off. There'll be a massive loop around the top of the training ground or testing area. It'll be marked out. We can ride around it. Accelerate down through the speed measuring area. Gas off. Front brake, back brake, first gear, and stop. Easy as that. That's a nice, smooth, controlled stop. And wait for your examiner to give you further instructions. After the control stop comes the emergency stop. 
same loop i'm going to go around the big loop at the chest in center i'll try and put a, an image up on this video as well so you can see how it looks uh, through the speed measuring area 50 kilometers an hour this time is my speed requirement which i tell my students is around about 32 33 miles per hour it's a bit of an obscure number um, second gear nice positive throttle as soon as you have got your speed measured the examiner's hand will go up and it's at that point we start to do the emergency stop the objective here is to stop as soon and as safe as possible we don't want to meet the examiner we don't want to get up to that point or we don't want to stop in any particular box so as soon and as safe as possible so let's have a look at that then we set ourselves away we'll get a bike into second gear nice and positive as we ride around the top we accelerate towards the examiner we shut the gas, we squeeze the front brake, squeeze the back brake, clutch comes in and we stop the bike. So you can see nice, smooth, consistent emergency stop. Once we've done our emergency stop, we're on to the collision avoidance exercise. Same speed requirements, same loop, same area um, of the testing area. However, this time there'll be two blue cones offset where the final exit point of the, uh, the braking area is. So you get two red cones at the start of the braking area, you get another set in the middle where the speed's measured, there's a speed measuring device, and then you get the, the last set. And where that last set is, there'll be two cones offset, okay? They can make you swerve left or right. It's entirely up to the examiner and, and the confines of the uh, testing area, of course. Uh, so I'm gonna look at this one to the right. Now I'm going to go backwards through my testing area here because I can't swerve towards these gates. I'll end up hitting them. So I'm going to turn around in the car park and ride through them. Again, 50 kilometers an hour, ride through, gas off once your speed's got measured, keep that gas off, go through the swerve. And then there's two cones at the very far end where you have to stop with your front wheel between those two cones. This one is um, one that catches a lot of people out. We get a lot of people um, clipping the cones here because they stare at them. So you're best off to look at the far cone so that you don't hit the close cone. Um, and the other thing that, that catches people out is the speed requirement as well. So you've got to be nice and positive on that throttle. Uh, it isn't a difficult exercise. It's not, it's not as tight as you think. Um, let's have a run through it and see how we get on. So I'm just going to turn myself around outside. As I say, I can't do the uh, swerve here because there's some big iron gates. But what I can do is turn myself around in the car park here. And I can run at it this way. So we go through, we gas off and we swerve and then we come to a gentle stop at the end, a controlled stop. And I can run at it this way. So we go through, we gas off and we swerve and then we come to a gentle stop at the end, a controlled stop. And that's all there is to it, really. That's the collision avoidance exercise. Again, 50 kilometers an hour. And that is every exercise on the Mod 1 test. Good luck. Uh, and can't wait to see, uh, see you when you come for your training.